So, uh, are you ready? Yes, sir. Um, who's some say no? No. Totally. Are you good? So today we traded um, Taylor Hall to um, to um, New Jersey for defenseman Adam Larson. Um, significant trade for the Edmonton Oilers and for the New Jersey New Jersey Devils. Uh, you know, obviously Taylor's a, a been a long-standing member here. He's been a very good player here. Uh, and he's a guy that leaves everything on the ice, and I respect that. Um, in the last four or five months, uh, you know, I've, I've been very quite public in saying we're looking for uh, some some defensemen. We really got to shore up our defense, and we've we've pounded the pavement, and and this this is the price that you have to pay, and it's unfortunate. Um, a player of Taylor's caliber, but we're getting a really good player back. Uh, Adam Larson is 6'3". I think he's 2'10 now. Very smart player, and he, it took him a little while to get going, but he had a terrific year this past year. Uh, he's uh, He moves the puck. He defends well. He can log a lot of minutes. He can play 25, 27, 28 minutes. He can match up against all the top forwards. Uh, he can move the puck. He has he has more skill to show also. So, you know that this that's it's unfortunate in these in these deals that you have to, you know this is what you have to do. But I felt it was a player that uh, I've watched very closely, and uh, this year, and uh, I could see his game trending up, and uh, it was time to to, to act on it. Um, I spoke with Taylor about the trade earlier today. And uh, he was very disappointed, uh, felt that uh, he was part of the solution. I, I didn't disagree with him. Um, I just said, this is the business. You, you have to make hard decisions. I, I, my roots aren't as deep in this organization as Taylor, so I respect his emotion. Um, I've always respected his, his, his play and his competitiveness, and he'll, you know, he'll have a real good uh, career going forward in New Jersey. Um, we, uh, you know, we tried uh, to varying degrees at the at the draft to to facilitate a trade um, for a defenseman. We tried on a number of levels to uh, draft a defenseman. It meant maybe moving down. Uh, we were fortunate to get the player we did for a number of reasons. Um, so this made the search for a defenseman a little more uh, urgent. So, um, questions? Peter, you know, they say that you win the trade if you get the best player in the trade. And maybe in this situation, did you know that the issues on the blue line were deep enough that maybe you had to make a deal you knew on the surface you might not win in order to fix the significant uh, that, That's a fair comment, Ryan. If, 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 you, if you look just at what they've accomplished so far uh, in the league, you would think that. And... Um, so you know, he's a younger player, so he's you know, not not by much by a year. Um, you know, it, it's a need-based trade. Uh, I feel very strongly about this player. Uh, I think he's only scratched the surface. Um, he was really excited when I talked to him. Uh, he felt the same thing. But but yeah, that's a that's a fair fair comment. Terry and <coughs> Um, obviously, to some extent, the uh, city isn't uh, doing cartwheels out there right now. But to, uh, and to what extent can you uh, let me rephrase this? Uh, uh, project that uh, by July 1st they'll be happier with their hockey team than they might be at this exact moment. Well, I, I really can't project beyond saying that that you know we're we're continuing to work on improving the team, Terry. Um, we y yesterday we had a couple of players visit the team. Uh, we spent the whole day with them. We showed them the new rink. Uh, we're being proactive on that front. I don't know. Like you, you, we can only be as proactive as we can, and then we're doing that. So, um, what I can tell you is, if if we don't uh, do anything on July first, it's not for lack of trying, and I'll continue to to, to try and improve this team. Peter. Hi, over here. Uh, I mean, you mentioned that your roots with the Oilers aren't as deep as Hall, who's been here since being drafted first overall. 
when they finished last the first time and he was kind of associated with that wave of the rebuild where the team hasn't improved that much. Uh, I mean, is there any significance for you having been here a year, having drafted Connor, that this is maybe branching off the road a little bit and, you know, the identity of the team is a little more yours now? Well, that may, that may be a byproduct. It certainly wasn't any primary objective. Uh, the bottom line is you're going to have to pay a good price to get a good player. And and that's really what happened. And it was it was a need that I felt was significant. Um, and you know that really that's that's the bottom line in, in this transaction. Um, that's what I can say on that. Well, like I've I've been part of difficult deals, and and you know when you do when you especially when you do well any any type of deal is difficult. This is what I spoke to Taylor about. Like, listen, I know I'm upro uprooting your life, so that that by itself is difficult. Um, you know, th there's a there's a pedigree and and uh, um, uh, label attached to uh, certain players, and 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 they're earned, and Taylor has that. You know, the, the player that we acquired doesn't have that, just be, just by virtue of, of of his development curve. And but he has he has the requisite skill set. He has the the passion. He's got the size. He's got the skill. So it, it's something that that uh, I, I believe in this player, and and he's going to really help us. We need like we the, the righty lefty thing on defense is very significant, and 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 we have to have someone who can push the puck up to our forwards. And this, this guy has that ability. He's not your classic puck mover. He doesn't, he doesn't have uh, the, the lightning speed that, we've, that maybe people completely associate with puck moving D-man. But he moves the puck quickly. He, he sees the, the lanes quickly. Uh, he's a very, very smart player. His skating is good and getting better. And he's, you know, he's becoming, he's becoming uh, a very good defenseman in this league. A little, a little bit, Derek. Um, and just on on Pujarvi, um, you know, like he's a really good player, and we were fortunate to get him. Uh, Columbus had other needs, and, and that's you know, and, and I, I can't speak further. But that's you know, that, this happens sometimes. It's no, we were fortunate. Yes, it, it did make it easier. I mean, he, he, it made it easier. Um, you know, like you don't want to say that. Well, hey, this guy's filling this guy's role, like, but because he's a young player and and he's growing and 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 he's just beginning his career. But it it did make it easier. Uh, two, if you don't mind, did did do we see this as a byproduct of given your brothers, you would rather have kept Brian Newton Hopkins a centerman, or or is this just the only deal you could make? I would say neither. Like this is this is the deal that we were targeting this player. We we, we were in on other deals, Mark, but this is the, I mean this is the deal that made sense for a number of reasons, um, and you know to to say that this is a default deal. I don't know if that's what you're alluding to. You know I I, I wouldn't look at it that way. I, I I see us acquiring a young, big, strong defenseman who's in the league, playing strong, moving the puck. There's there's um, there's right D available out there. We had been in discussions on a number of levels. Um, you know, we still may be in discussions on on levels going forward. Uh, this is a guy that we we wanted to have right now. And the way the cap works, every year we see some of the really good teams trading away players and losing the trade. You know, Chicago's been doing it for years. Uh, when you're trying to rebuild a team and bringing in a bunch of money on whenever you're going to do it on July 1st and stuff, is this part of the byproduct? In order to bring talent in, do you have to lose a trade sometimes to get guys out? Well, you know, like, to, 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 is that a nice way of saying you're losing the trade? <laughs> you know, like, I, I think you have to reserve judgment spec on this before before you start uh, the Twitter war. Um, it's it's uh, He's a good player, and and... You know, like, 
do, do you, is it all one equation? It all balances out. Uh, you know, at the end, when you build a team, like you have to give a little and get a little. Maybe that's the answer to your question. Um, yeah, the D are so important, and those D that can move a puck are so important in this game now. The game's changing, and it, I felt it was critical that we we move on this. We have a we have a excess amount of forwards. Taylor's a very good player. He's he's part of the fabric of this organization to this stage, and it's difficult. Hybrid guy, Larson, that is, in that he moves the puck, but he also uh, worked most of the year as a shutdown guy with Andy Green. He's a very strong defender. Like he, 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 like there are games that that we saw him, that I saw. He's like 25, 27 minutes. I mean, he plays against the top forwards. He's got that element to his game. It's a very underrated element of his game. So you would expect him in your top pair? I would at this stage, yes. Maybe a little bit of the bigger picture, Peter, timeline-wise for the organization. You've got a couple of years left to Connor McDavid on an entry-level deal. Do you need to... One step at a time here. No, I know. <laughs> what guess. I'm saying is you need, to, you need to make some headway and push forward while you have the benefit of, you know, dry saddle, same thing. Some of these contracts where they're not, these guys in their second deals getting some... Well, uh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, a, a secondary benefit of this deal, but certainly not for the reason why we did it, is 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 Adam's contract, and and the cap hit, and that, that gives us a little bit more leeway going forward into as you as you build out the years. Um, but I have to be cognizant of all that stuff, and and um, you know it's just it's part of it's part of projecting your roster from year to year. And Is there a, a statement you want to make to Edmonton considering the timing of this and there's still more to happen? And, uh, uh, um, you know, like when, when, you're, when you're evaluating your entry level guys, for example, you're not looking at where they're at now, but where they're at five, six years from now. Is part of that in play here? Uh, um, a lot of us have suggested you needed two D. Two D. Yeah. but not one. Is uh, that's still very much out there. Uh, that well, I, I had said early, earlier, Terry, that it, it, we, we were, we, if we can improve our, continue to improve our D, we will. Um, you know, the, the, the message is that it was a critical part of our team that we had to improve, and we were willing to pay the price to do it. That, that's the message. There's a, there's a number of, of – uh, there's, there's certain time periods left in the summer team building uh, – so to speak, and, and we'll we'll try and take advantage of those. Whether, you know, we had we had a couple of players in uh, f for the shopping period. Uh, we're we're going to try and uh, uh, you know connect with uh, certain players uh, uh, in the July first period. There's a ho there's a whole other trade period after that. So I mean, like this, we just have, we have to work every period. We have to work at improving the team. So that might be the message. I mean, it's an obvious message, but that's that's what we're striving for here. Building part of it of, uh, of uh, conceptually, for example, you've got the the, the three centers right now. Is, that, is this a kind of a commitment in that direction? Is well, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I'm not going to going to disclose everything we're going to do, but I, I I can tell you this is that is is like we're able to put Leon up, okay, and that gives us a little more flexibility up to the wing. You know, he showed that he could do that. He plays well on his off wing. He makes plays on his back end. You know, he, he likes he likes to, to generate speed more at center, but he does he's a smart enough player, so that gives us some flexibility. I'm not saying that that's what we're going to do. I mean, I'm just you probably heard that from me before, but. What was the rush to make the trade now before July first? The trade not still been there after July. Well, I wouldn't call it a rush, um, but it might not have it might not have been there. So what happens is 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 that the the market changes when kind of those players become available and guys change their approaches. Um, that really wasn't a dynamic like th there was there were some other deals we were looking at, uh, and there were other reasons why it had to happen today. Not, not, nothing really newsworthy, but uh, we we acted on it today. Peter, there was a <clears throat> there was a sentiment out there, probably without much to back it up, that. Um, you know, that, that moving Taylor Hall had something to do with anything other than making a good hockey trade. Can you address that or put it to bed that, uh, that you know, Taylor, there was no issues with Taylor Hall first? No, there weren't. Like, there's, this, is a, this is, like, I couldn't stress more that we had to improve our D. 
We wanted to get a, a, a right shot D that could play high in your lineup, and that's the price. Like, like Taylor's, like he's a competitive player, a very good player. He's going to have success. He's won before. You know, he's he's. You know, we have a we we just that's what you have to do to get that type of player. Trading a guy who was in the top three scoring left wingers the last four years for a defenseman that just is a, sort of emerged last year. Do people, does the hockey world understand that that's a fair trade? I I don't know. I like any of my colleagues that I talk to understand and and and, and talk about the merits of the deal in a in a beneficial way, a mutually beneficial way. I, I can understand spec if someone thinks if you as I said earlier if you just look at the accomplishments of Taylor in the league now to what Adam's done, I, I can understand if they think that. But um, this is a player, as I said before, this is a player, big, strong D-man, who is coming into his own. He can play, he's, he's, he's like your, he's your matchup defenseman, and he can play in an offensive role. That's not his forte spec. The offense isn't his forte, but he can pass, he sees the ice, he makes plays, he can shoot. I mean, he's, he, I mean, He's not a sexy defenseman. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's 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 a fair. You know, that's a fair equation. Yeah, that's. I mean, he's. You know, he's. He's a he's a really good defenseman. He just he's a guy that that maybe he, well he's not he's not in the spotlight. He's he hasn't done and he probably ha doesn't deserve to be in the spotlight because he hasn't done it yet. But I can assure you that this last year he's he's come into his own. Whatever you do, if you're able to do anything on July 1st and beyond, are we going to see more of that? Well, I, you know, I think that's an important um, attribute to any successful team. And, I mean, you, you can characterize the winning teams, the cup winning teams each year in a different way. Um, but I, I, like, I, I've had success with that. I think there's a lot of teams that have had success with that. I think it's a simple law of physics. Um, I think it's important for the for the players that we have, that we add that and continue to add that component in a prudent way. So um, your question was, do I? <laughs> that's a good enough answer. There are a couple more guys. Do you, uh, if, if Adam Larson projects as sort of the bigger, stronger, more quiet, say, a number two, do you have a shot out there at a more offensive defenseman that can run a power play? Well, again, you know, I wouldn't call Adam a uh, – a pure power play guy. So if, if if there's, I mean, we like I, that's an area we need to fill. We need to improve. So, you know, that's one of the things that we would continue to look at because it's an area. Pardon me. Is that guy out there? There are some guys that would fit that bill. Whether they're available or not, I'm not going to disclose. But um, there are some. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.